Hey, what's going on? My name is Michael. You guys are watching IDB. And in this video, I wanna talk about why, in my opinion, the base model iPhone 15 is going to be a better purchase than the iPhone 15 Pro series. So let's go ahead and roll the intro and get started. So I wanna start off this video by discussing the obvious. Yes, the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max are objectively better smartphones than the base model iPhone 15 and 15 Plus. That is obvious because the Pro models are a lot more expensive. But in this video, I wanna talk about value because I think the base model iPhone 15 is where it's at for value. This year with the base model iPhone 15, it really feels like it's been pro-ified in a way. The first major new feature that you're going to get with the iPhone 15 base model is the dynamic island. The island is a great place for all of your system alerts and ongoing activities. So for example, if you have a timer going and then you go home, you're able to see your timer in the island at the top. Also, if I jump into music, for example, and I start playing a song, you can see that song also goes into the island if it doesn't glitch out there at the top. And if you want to have any controls for what's going on in your island, you can press and hold on either one of the widgets and you can control anything right here from the top of your screen without changing the app that you're in. So this makes using your iPhone so much faster and just more usable. And it also becomes even better when you integrate it within third-party applications. So the island, many people think it's a gimmick, but in my opinion, it is one of the best new features we've had to the iPhone in years. And this year, all iPhone 15 models, including the base model, get USB-C. So not even the iPhone 14 Pro had USB-C. Obviously, Apple waited until the 15 series to give us USB-C. But this just opens up an entire new ecosystem of accessories you can connect your iPhone to. For example, I have a USB-C to HDMI dongle, and the other day I was able to hook up my iPhone right to my TV and play a show. Also, I was able to use the exact same dongle to connect Ethernet to my iPhone 15. So just having USB-C now on the base iPhone is such a great feature. There were rumors before this phone even came out that the iPhone 15 Pro was gonna be the only one to get USB-C this year, but I am so glad Apple decided not to go that route, and we have USB-C on all new iPhones this year, which is an amazing feature. And the other way that the base model iPhone 15 has been pro-ified this year is with the camera. So the base model iPhone now gets a 48 megapixel sensor on the main camera. The other camera is the ultra wide. The only camera that it's missing is the zoom camera from the Pro series. Now, a lot of people that just take normal photos aren't even going to miss that zoom camera. If you go into settings and then camera and then click on formats, you can see we can turn on resolution control right here. When you go into the camera application, you can see that we have a button at the top that's called HEIF Max. HEIF or H-E-I-F, High Efficiency Image Format, is the new format that Apple uses for images instead of JPEG. So when you take a photo in the normal photo mode, it is now going to be in 24 megapixels, which is even a higher resolution than last year's iPhone 14 Pro. But now, if you turn on Heath Max, you are now able to capture a full resolution 48 megapixel photo with the base iPhone, which is an amazing feature and it's definitely not something I was expecting to come to the cheapest iPhone this year. And one more thing I wanna show you here on Apple's compare iPhone page is another way, in my opinion, this phone has been pro-ified is with the screen brightness. I was definitely not expecting a boost this high. If we go all the way down to the display section of the compare page, you can see that the brightness on the base model iPhone 15 here on the left is now the exact same as last year's iPhone 14 Pro. When I use my iPhone 14 Pro, that screen got insanely bright. There literally was never a scenario where I couldn't see my phone display even in direct sunlight on the sunniest day. So now even on the base model iPhone 15, you are going to get insane levels of brightness when you're in direct sunlight. Another really great feature that came to the base model iPhone 15 this year is what Apple is calling next generation portrait mode. This simply allows you to take a photo and you can turn on portrait mode after the fact. 
This is honestly a game changer for me because I have sort of a problem when it comes to taking photos. I completely love the way that portrait mode photos look. However, whenever I open up the camera, my number one priority is just snapping the shot in time before the subject or whatever I want to take a photo of disappears or the scene changes. So I usually never have time to capture a photo in portrait mode. Luckily, with the base model iPhone 15 and also the 15 Pro this year, you are now able to retroactively turn on portrait mode. And that is because the iPhone is capturing all of the depth data in that scene when you take a normal photo. And this is even more impressive on the base model iPhone 15, and I'll tell you why. Because the iPhone 15 Pro has a LiDAR scanner. This shoots out little lasers from the back of your iPhone, and this allows the Pro Series iPhones to get way better depth information to improve portrait mode. However, I feel like this LiDAR scanner is a little bit overrated, and that's because it really only helps when you're taking portrait mode shots in nighttime. When you're taking a normal portrait mode shot on the base model iPhone without a LiDAR scanner, it is still going to look fantastic. So here is just a quick example. Here's a photo of my girlfriend. I took this in the normal photo mode, but I was able to apply that really nice portrait effect in the background. If I click on edit, I'll show you some of the portrait edits that we can do. So it's gonna load the photo in here. So I'm able to change the blur of the background. You can see I can go all the way down to F1.4 if I want to. I think the sweet spot is around F2. And then you can also click on this icon on the top left next to the f-stop number and you're actually able to change the portrait lighting after the fact. So here is the natural lighting. I have applied studio lighting. You also get contour light, stage light, and a few other ones here that look pretty cool. So this is really powerful that you can take a normal photo and get all of the portrait information to make your photo look a lot better after the fact. This is going to make regular iPhone photos a lot better. Another awesome feature for the camera, as I said before, the sensor is now 48 megapixels. So like I said before, all of the basic photos you take in the camera are now going to be 24 megapixels, which is just gonna give you a lot more detail. But that also allows you to have a two times zoom without losing any detail. So inside the camera, you're now gonna see a 2X button. Before, you would only have 0.5 and 1X, but now we have three focal lengths even though this base model iPhone only has two cameras. And that is because it's able to crop in to the middle 12 megapixels of that sensor and give you a two times zoom without losing any detail. So the 48 megapixel sensor isn't just good for capturing high detail, high resolution shots when you're in good lighting. It can also completely change the way you shoot every single day by offering a zero compression, full resolution 2X zoom. And all iPhone 15 models this year get the new Smart HDR5. This is actually a much better algorithm than what's on the 14 Pro with Smart HDR4. It is going to make highlights in your photos a lot better. So you know when you take a photo into direct sunlight, sometimes the highlights are gonna be blown out just because the sensor cannot get enough dynamic range. Well, that is going to be much better on the iPhone 15 series because Smart HDR5 is a lot better with highlights as you can see in this photo. So that's probably enough about the cameras. You guys have probably heard enough already. I now wanna share with you some of the things that make the iPhone 15 just a good phone overall. The first one is the new matte finish on the back of the phone, as you've probably been able to see throughout the entire video. This is the first base iPhone we've ever had that has a matte texture on the back of the iPhone. And this really makes the iPhone feel a lot more premium. Every time I would hold a base model iPhone, I think the last one I had was my iPhone 13 mini. The phone would feel really good and I would like the matte aluminum rails. However, the sticky glass back would always give the phone more of a cheap feeling. And we definitely don't have that with the iPhone 15 as we have a really, really nice brushed matte texture on the back of the phone. And on top of the matte texture, all iPhone 15 models this year get the new refined edge design. When you see it in video and on press images on Apple's website, it may not look like it's that big of a difference. However, I can tell you if you hold your phone and use it without a case on a regular basis, this very tiny design change is going to make a huge impact on how comfortable your iPhone feels in your hand. 
if I get it a bit closer to the camera, you can see that we no longer have a perfect 90 degree edge on the corner. Instead, it has a very slight taper. And I'll compare it to the iPhone 15 Pro because it's going to be identical. These phones are an order of magnitude more comfortable in your hand than the previous year's iPhone 14 and 14 Pro. Just by rounding off the edges a very slight amount, Apple has completely changed the comfort level of this iPhone in your hand. The iPhone 15 this year gets the A16 Bionic chip, which is the same chip we had in the iPhone 14 Pro. And to be honest with you guys, I completely stopped caring about the speed of my iPhone after I say the iPhone 12. This iPhone 15 feels almost identically as fast as the iPhone 15 Pro. The only thing I notice with the iPhone 15 Pro is just how much smoother the display feels. And that is because of the 120 Hertz ProMotion display on the Pro. It has absolutely nothing to do with the CPU. In terms of pure power, the iPhone 15 is one of the fastest phones you can get. And I believe when I read benchmarks of these two phones compared online, I believe the iPhone 15 Pro was only about 15 or 20% faster. So if you get the base model iPhone 15, you have literally nothing to worry about. It is still one of the absolute fastest phones on the market. I also wanna mention another design change, or I guess not a design change, but something that Apple kept the same, and that is the mute switch. So if we compare this to the iPhone 15 Pro, you can see Apple has replaced it with an action button. Now, I think that this is important for some people because if you remember when Apple switched from the iPhone 8 to the iPhone 10, a lot of people, especially older people that are used to using their phone in a certain way, they really, really missed the home button and there was a huge learning curve. So if someone is deciding on getting a new iPhone 15 or 15 Pro this year, let's say they're an older person that wants their phone to work exactly the same as their older phone, I think for some people having this old fashioned mute switch where they know exactly how it works is going to be a better option for some people. Another really great thing I wanna mention with the iPhone 15, and this also goes for the iPhone 15 Pro series, is that you're now able to charge other accessories and devices thanks to the new USB-C port on the bottom. So if you have a USB-C to USB-C cable, you're able to charge another iPhone 15. If you have a USB-C to lightning cable, you're able to charge another older iPhone or even a pair of AirPods. And probably my favorite is if you have a USB-C to Apple Watch charger, you are able to charge up your Apple Watch right from your iPhone. So now at the end of the video, I kind of want to do a year over year comparison to really drive home the point that this iPhone 15 is a much bigger upgrade than the iPhone 15 Pro. I want to start with the Pro. If we compare the iPhone 14 Pro to the 15 Pro, the only major changes that you're going to notice are one, the steel frame went to a titanium frame and we got the new rounded edges. We also get the same rounded edges on the base model iPhone 15. We also get a new 5X zoom lens. However, that is only on the 15 Pro Max and you're gonna have to pay a new asking price of $1,200 to get that 5X zoom lens on the Pro Max. And you also get the action button on the 15 Pro, which as I mentioned earlier, may not be for some people. You get USB-C, which is the same connector as the iPhone 15. However, on the Pro models, you do get higher transfer speeds. I don't think for many normal consumers, they're going to care about transfer speeds, but if you are a Pro user, like this iPhone is being marketed at, that is going to be a nice feature. And then finally, you go from the A16 to the A17 Pro, which as I stated before, is a pretty minor upgrade. So of course, the iPhone 15 Pro is still a better phone objectively than the 14 Pro, but as you've been able to tell with all those things I listed, we really didn't see that many new features with the iPhone 15 Pro. In fact, if you go from the smaller 14 Pro to the smaller size 15 Pro, you are actually getting the exact same cameras year over year. Apple did not change the lenses, the sensors, nothing. So the only way to get a slightly different camera is if you get the 15 Pro Max with, like I said, that new 5X zoom lens. So I just talked about the year over year upgrades from the 14 Pro to the 15 Pro. Honestly, kind of a letdown if you ask me. Now I wanna talk about from the iPhone 14 to the iPhone 15, because this is honestly probably one of the biggest upgrades we've seen to the iPhone in years. 
First, as I said, we go from a squared off design to now a rounded edge design. We also get the matte finish on the back. As I said, this is probably the best feeling base model iPhone I've ever felt. And also I quickly wanna mention, I don't know if it's just in my head, but it feels like the texture on the Pro phones is a little bit more rough, whereas the texture on the base iPhone 15 just feels a little bit more silky. Um, this might just be in my head, but if you guys know the answer to this, let me know in the comments down below. And the base model iPhone 15, as I said before, also gets the 48 megapixel sensor. Coming from the iPhone 14, which had a 12 megapixel sensor, this is going to be a much better camera. On top of getting default 24 megapixel photos, you can also take full resolution 48 megapixel photos, as well as the new option of having a 2x zoom in the camera, which wasn't even an option before on the iPhone 14. And you also get the dynamic island, which as I said, completely changes the way that I use my iPhone. It is just so much easier to keep track of all of my live activities and system alerts when they have a nice home here on the top of the iPhone. I can't tell you how many times I've been cooking dinner and I use my timer up here, or if I'm playing music and I wanna skip my track. I also use it when I'm ordering food. So for example, if I'm using Uber Eats, it is so nice to be able to track my food right at the top of my phone in the island. And another really great change going from the iPhone 14 to the iPhone 15 this year is in the screen. And I think this is honestly the biggest change that most people are going to notice when they're using it in direct sunlight. Here on Apple's compare page, the iPhone 15 is on the left and the 14 is on the right. As you can see, the typical max brightness is 1000 compared to 800. But when you are in sunlight or outdoors, you can see here that the iPhone 15 can max out at 2000 nits of peak brightness, which as I said, is the same as the iPhone 15 Pro. And the highest that the iPhone 14 could get was around 1000 nits when in direct sunlight. So you get literally double the amount of brightness on the screen on this base model iPhone year over year. This is a fantastic display upgrade. And the base model iPhone also goes from Lightning to USB-C, which is objectively a better connector. And you also go from the A15 chip to the A16 chip. Again, like I said, I stopped caring about how fast iPhones are because they are just always really fast and they always work. So you're probably not gonna notice a difference from the A15 to the A16, but it still is a processor upgrade nonetheless. So that was really a mouthful, but if there's one thing you can take away from this video, it is that both phones got upgrades from last year's model, but in my opinion, the base model iPhone 15 got way more substantial upgrades that you're gonna notice every single day. The iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max are objectively better smartphones. However, in my opinion, the improvements may not be compelling enough to convince the normal consumer to pay the extra money for the fancier model. Right now in the United States, the iPhone 15 base model as shown in this video is $799. The base model 15 Pro is $999. And the 15 Pro Max right here has a new starting price of $1199. So a $200 difference between the 15 and 15 Pro and a $400 difference between the 15 and the 15 Pro Max. You can choose to use that money to buy a pair of AirPods or even use it towards an Apple Watch, for example. The point I'm trying to make is that with the iPhone 15, you are getting 98% of the iPhone experience you get on the Pro model, except it is going to be a lot cheaper. So you just have to decide where you're better off spending your hard-earned money. So looking at the entire package, all of the changes and upgrades from the iPhone 14 to the iPhone 15, I think that the base model iPhone 15 is the best iPhone that someone can buy in the next year. So that's gonna wrap things up. If you guys enjoyed this video, found it informative or helpful, please drop a like down below. It does really help us out quite a bit. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Michael with IDB and I'll see you in the next video.